Hello and welcome to video one, your presenting need or desired outcome for executive coaching. I am Dr. Gary Miskowski, also known as Dr. G. In video one, we will cover the six most typical reasons why business people engage in executive coaching. The learning objective of this video is to help you clarify your expectations and those of your sponsor about the intended purpose and outcomes of your coaching process. Your executive coach should be explicitly adapting the coaching process to your needs and your intended outcomes. Executive coaching is not a one-size-fits-all process. We will also identify the limitations and potential downsides of some executive coaching processes or methods that may be suggested to you. This is sort of our buyer beware section of this and the following videos. We will refer to these warnings as red flags or warnings. Now, let's explore the most typical presenting needs. During the initial selection process, it's important to be clear about why you want to engage in coaching and what you want as an outcome. However, consider your definition of this need as preliminary. Why? Sometimes we refer to your initial identification of a need as the presenting need. Because once you engage in an effective coaching process, you may learn more about yourself and identify some other related developmental needs or goals that you are motivated to pursue. The six most typical reasons why business people engage in coaching are, one, to address a situation specific need. Two, to accelerate his or her individual professional development. Three, to obtain guidance to manage significant organizational change. Four, to take charge of a new management role and team. Five, to engage in remedial coaching, which attempts to turn around a valued executive who is otherwise in danger of derailing. And six, to interpret a 360 degree feedback survey or other leadership related assessment. Let's review each of these six reasons so you can better define your presenting need for executive coaching. One, situation specific need. In a situation specific need, there is a specific pressing developmental need that has been identified that tends to occur in specific situations with specific stakeholders. Examples include reducing micromanaging behavior and improving delegation to direct reports. Learning to effectively coach others on your team. Managing up. Influencing a specific difficult peer. Preparing for a major presentation to key stakeholders. For more senior executives, learning to influence more effectively horizontally across organizational boundaries or national cultures in a matrix organization. Often the situation is specific enough or the need has been accurately identified by others and or by you to your satisfaction that further assessment or confirmation is often not necessary. There are also no other pressing or developmental needs that you are particularly interested in pursuing at this time. However, accepting a presenting need at face value can also have some significant downsides. If you skip the step of validating your developmental needs with others, the executive and coach may be addressing the wrong need, not the primary need that other key stakeholders who must effectively interact with the coachee would have picked. You perform in a world where the perceptions of others are the realities you have to deal with, connect with, and influence. Ignoring or minimizing those perceptions is usually a formula for failure. As a result, while a more comprehensive 360 degree feedback process might not be initially warranted, feedback from a few key stakeholders, including your HR partner, is usually very valuable. Two, accelerated development. Have you been identified as a manager with high potential? If you've been identified as having promise for bigger or more complex roles in the future, the business leadership would like to see that potential unfold as soon as possible. 
This need almost always fundamentally involves individualized, customized coaching. Sometimes the coaching process for high potential managers and executives is adapted to serve as an individual coaching process integrated with a group learning process such as action learning. Action learning is a team-based learning approach using the facilitated solving of a real business problem. What is distinctive about the action learning group development approach is the dual goal of both solving a business problem as well as specific learning and development among the participants. The intended outcome is to both solve a difficult business problem and achieve specific group and individual participant learning outcomes. The FedEx Excel program for high potential executives is an example of combining action learning with individual coaching for each participant. For high potential executives, typically, the developmental assessment focuses on both the coachee's current role as well as additional or different competencies that will be needed in the next likely roles. Keep in mind that many of the key competencies that made the high potential manager successful in the past may not make him or her successful in a larger, more complex, or qualitatively different role. As a result, the developmental needs identified and addressed are both current and forward-looking. So the question is, what are your developmental needs now, and what will they be in your next most likely future roles? In today's business environment, the world around you can change quickly. Businesses are notoriously bad at managing rapid or significant change. Failure rates of significant change initiatives have been estimated to be roughly 70%. I won't bore you here with the details of all the statistics, but they are available on the wisnami.com website. However, to address this common shortcoming, it is often valuable to have a guide by the side who is experienced in change management. Not all coaches have training, expertise, and experience in consulting for significant organizational changes. If this is your presenting need, you will want one that does. The Wisnami.com website presents both a general model for managing organizational change and case studies from my previous clients who have used coaching as a process to guide their efforts to lead and influence significant organizational change. These may be useful references for you as you clarify or confirm this presenting need. Sometimes we call taking on a new job executive transition. Unfortunately, some people use a similar term for outplacement or termination. So let's be clear. For supervisory and first level management jobs, focusing on effectively managing the first 90 to 100 days is often sufficient. For jobs with more discretionary decision making, for new managers and executives who are expected to make changes to the business to improve its performance, taking charge may require up to five quarters before they've really figured out what they've gotten themselves into. They need time to test and refine how to successfully implement the fewest changes that will make the greatest difference, given the estimated time and resources they have in their given situation. If you want more information about the specialized coaching for senior executives, See the three ways of change on the wisnami.com website. Remedial coaching is for business executives who are valued resources, but something is interfering with their ability to make the kind of contribution others hoped or assumed they would make. These executives are not considered to be damaged goods but they are considered to be on the road to possible derailment if they do not change. They are worth investing in to see if they can be turned around. Typically, they have clashed significantly with the predominant culture or politics. They have some blind spots, or they possess some internal demons that contribute to either self-defeating behaviors or unintended undesirable consequences. 
For seasoned executive coaches who excel at this kind of intervention, the successful turnaround rate is typically about 33%. But it can be done. It requires a coach who can both enable the executive to noticeably and consistently change, as well as create greater receptivity in others who may have written the executive off. Not all executive coaches have this expertise. Some people just want greater awareness without necessarily engaging in any systematic developmental change process. They intend to make whatever developmental improvements they choose primarily on their own. If all you want is someone who can interpret the likely meaning and implications of a 360 degree feedback survey, the Myers-Briggs, or some similar type of assessment instrument, find someone who has been certified to interpret the assessment or survey and select them. If they have been properly certified, they are aware of the strengths and limitations of the survey tool and will not overinterpret or overgeneralize the results. A qualified, certified, experienced interpreter of the assessment can give you a realistic understanding of the results and their likely implications. The coach should present the results as a set of likely hypotheses to be further tested, validated, refined, or recalibrated when compared with other information about the coachee. The assessment should be treated as just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Also keep in mind that there are many more people who can reasonably interpret a 360 degree survey or other popular assessment instrument than can provide effective individual coaching. Beyond interpretation, an effective experienced executive coach can help you translate the implications of the survey or integrated assessment results into a behaviorally detailed action plan and then provide follow-on individual coaching to enable you to actually change. Assessment and coaching are two different, but related, skill sets for coaches. While simply receiving an accurate and valid interpretation of one or more of these assessment instruments is valuable and is enough to meet the needs of some people, not comparing the results with other information about you and not systematically integrating the findings into some form of developmental action plan with some follow-up qualifies as something less than coaching light. Typically, this is nice to know information that ultimately results in little actual development or change in the coachee. As was determined years ago in counseling and psychotherapy research, insight does not necessarily lead to behavioral change. For more senior executive positions, I highly recommend using a 360 degree feedback interview process facilitated by a seasoned, experienced senior executive coach, rather than relying exclusively on standardized surveys. More on that elsewhere. So what are some of the red flags you should be looking for using a coach simply for a 360 assessment or other assessment instrument interpretation and feedback? Uncertified amateurs will tend to pigeonhole you into a box. From one assessment, they will jump to the conclusion that they know a lot more about you than you do. Oh, you're a D or an I. Let me tell you about yourself. At times, it can feel like the feedback process is bordering on a parlor game or visiting a fortune teller. An important question to ask is, has the coach been certified to use the assessment instrument? Make sure your coach is certified and experienced in the use of the feedback survey or assessment instrument. They should know the limitations of how much anyone can draw conclusions or generalize from the instrument and its results. They should know not to overgeneralize conclusions or treat the results as more than just another piece of the assessment puzzle. Keep in mind that only psychologists and others with advanced training in the American Psychological Association's accredited testing and assessment programs are certified to interpret personality tests and more advanced assessment instruments. 
So if you are interested in a more in-depth assessment of perhaps strong underlying motives, personality characteristics, hard wiring, or what I call personal demons that often have to be consciously managed in order for you to be more successful, you may need an executive coach who is also trained as a psychologist. So from the descriptions we've just provided, are you now clearer about your initial intended purpose or intended outcomes for your coaching process? Are you intending to, one, address a situation-specific need, two, accelerate your individual professional development, three, obtain guidance to manage significant organizational change, four, take charge of a new management role and team, five, turn around your perceived credibility with other key stakeholders, or six, obtain some new insights from a balanced interpretation of a 360 degree survey or other leadership related assessment. Depending on your presenting need, the coaching process will need to be adapted in terms of process, content, frequency of the coaching sessions, and length of the coaching process. In video two, we will briefly explore how the coaching process may need to be adapted depending on the degree to which your current business culture views executive coaching positively or negatively. Please select video two now.